Thank you for tuning in to the RY10 Pro and RY10 Elite Assembly Guide. Required tools, you'll need two 13 millimeter wrenches or sockets. You'll need one 19 millimeter or three quarter inch wrench or socket. You'll need one 17 millimeter wrench, one number one Phillips screwdriver, one 22 millimeter wrench. Optional tools, needle nose pliers. Adjustable wrenches can substitute for required wrench sizes. For any screwdriver or Allen key, approximately 3 16th, 4.7 millimeter in diameter. Step number one, you're gonna go ahead and take your tank shelf. You're gonna use five of your 13 millimeter bolts that will go in with five washers. Part number RKFAS0066. All bags are labeled nice and neat. Go ahead and get that tank shelf on there. Get your bolts with your washers together and then you're gonna go ahead and hand screw them in just hand tight. And then you'll go ahead and use your 13 millimeter wrench. Once your tank shelf is nice and tight and installed, you'll be able to have the tank shelf bear the weight of the propane bottle. That's where the propane bottle will actually sit. And you wanna make sure that it's nice and tight so the tank shelf is supporting its weight. Step number two, you're gonna go ahead and use the tank spacer. The tank spacer part number RKFAS0067. You're gonna use the 13 millimeter wrench, four bolts, four washers. You're gonna go ahead and take that tank spacer and mount it right on your kettle. The tank spacer is designed to create airspace between the propane bottle and the main kettle making sure that the propane bottle is no, never leaning up against the hot kettle. Step number three, part number RKFAS0080. Gonna go ahead and assemble the wheels on the axle. The side with the bearing retainer ring should be facing outward. And then you use your cotter pin to lock it in place. The wheels slide right onto the axles, nice and simple. Cotter pins lock things in place. Once you get into step number four, you're gonna mount those caster wheels, the front caster wheels, part number RKFAS0065. 19 millimeters or three quarter inch wrench is necessary. Total of eight bolts and eight washers will mount both caster wheels, four for each caster wheel. Your RY10 Pro or Elite is now on wheels, ready to get rolling. Let's go ahead and mount the valve and shoe, RKFAS0069. You'll notice the lock washers provided for the valve are shipped in pairs. Use one pair for each bolt with the wedge surface on the washers together. Same orientation that the washers come paired in. You can put your Rhino valve and your shoe right up against the machine, slide it on, and bolt the four bolts right onto the machine. The valve should be aligned so it is perpendicular to the ground before the bolts are tightened up. Step number six is the handlebars. Bend the handlebars over the mounting studs one side at a time. It will take a little pressure to open it up, but once they are on, they're nice and tight. Then you'll use the RKFAS0083, the 19 millimeter or three quarter inch wrench to tighten up the nuts on the bolts that you've now put your handlebars over. Tighten it up nice and tight. You can also adjust it to be at the nice height that you want to operate the machine for. Next, you'll go ahead and use the thermometer in the case that you're using the RY10 Pro. If you're using the RY10 Elite, you'll tighten up that electrical output that goes from your thermometer needle all the way through the wiring to the digital display. Next, you're gonna go ahead and put the temperature gauge protector, which is designed for the RY10 Pro temperature gauge. The RY10 Elite is there as well to protect the wiring. RKFAS0071, 13 millimeter wrench, two bolts, two washers. Get that tightened up nice and tight. Number eight, on the fly agitation. Attach the agitation handle with the hardware pre-assembled on the handlebars. 
You'll remove the two bolts on the agitation connector handle and insert the handle into the slot over the stud inside the kettle just like this. Install the agitation sweep bar as shown. Put it over the left stud first and then the right. Attach the agitation sweep bar by reassembling the bolts to the agitation connector handle. Number nine, lid handle. Use the bolts, four washers and two nuts. RK FAS 0070 13 millimeter wrench and tighten on that handle. You'll use that handle to open and close the lid to access the crack sealer inside the kettle. Burner install. Insert the burner tray into the guide tracks at the back of the kettle. Make sure it goes into the guide tracks though so it fits nice and neat. Insert the burner retainer pin through the slot in the shelf and into the grommet on the burner tray. Number 11, shoe control arm. Insert the shoe control handle into the lower guide. Insert the lower end of the shoe control rod into the shoe tab and insert the retaining pin to lock it in place. Number 12, valve control arm. Insert the valve control handle into the upper guide. Then you'll go down to the valve, the rhino valve, turn the valve connector rod clockwise until it is tight, and then turn it approximately one rotation counterclockwise until it's in the position shown here. Insert the lower end of the control rod into the valve connector rod and insert the retaining pin. Setting up your propane tank, place your propane tank on the shelf and secure it with the ratchet strap provided. Only tighten the ratchet strap so it is snug. Do not apply excess force on that bracket. Go ahead and connect your regulator to the propane tank. It's now time to melt some asphalt crack filler and fill those asphalt cracks. 